Hello boys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Recently one of my viewers asked to make a video about Alla Pugacheva and that comment received a lot of likes. So in today's video we're gonna talk about the most popular singer in the Soviet times, Alla Pugacheva, and I will share with you my memories also some interesting facts. By the way, if you're interested in the topic of music in the Soviet Union, I have a separate playlist and link will be below in the comment section. Alla Borisovna Pugacheva, born in 1949, was hands down the most popular singer, not just female singer, most popular singer period in the late times of the Soviet Union, so we're talking about late 1970s and all the way through 1980s. We even had a joke on this topic, so in the future books about history of the Soviet Union, Leonid Brezhnev will be described as one of the Soviet leaders during the era of Alla Pugacheva. <laughs> well, I hope this joke was a little bit funny. But anyway, I just would like to say that I truly enjoy making Ushanka show videos and interact with you guys, read your comments, answer your questions, because it makes me look back and analyze my past history of my country and ask questions that I never asked before. Like, I never bothered even to think why was Alla Pugacheva so famous and so popular in the Soviet Union. I mean, over 250 million albums sold pretty much in the Soviet Union alone maybe a little bit was sold in Bulgaria and Yugoslavia, but mostly in the Soviet Union. It's comparable to Madonna, who sold around 248 million albums worldwide. And actually there's a lot of similarities between Alla Pugacheva and Madonna. Alla Pugacheva had her breakthrough in 1975 with her son Arlikina, we'll talk about later, and she was 26 years old at that time. And Madonna, I believe she had her breakthrough in 1983 when she was 25 with the song Like a Virgin. So when I started thinking about popularity of Alla Pugacheva and I said before it was just like I never asked question why sun comes up in the east and goes down the west is just the way it is right. Similarly it was like yeah Alla Pugacheva just was famous and I never thought why. I mean we had other popular Soviet singers for example Valentina Tolkunova, Lyudmila Zikina, Anna German so that's sort of female singers but the difference was they were singers which means they performed literally like mormon sister wives you know step to the left step to the right raise your hand switch the microphone raise your other hand so just they were singing they were not performing and Alla Pugacheva offered something totally different back in 1975 with her son Arlikina and public fell in love with her really instantly. Unfortunately, due to the copyrights, I can't play even a small snippets of her song, so everything will be below in the comment section. I'll provide the links to her songs and you can pause the video and maybe watch her song or just watch my video till the end and then start playing her music. And just to give you an idea how popular her first song was, Arlikina in 1975, she sold 14 million singles of that one song, Arlikina. And now I want to read you a short article about Alla Pugacheva written by a professional music critic. And I used Google Translate so some wording could be funky. So anyway, Pugacheva jumped on the stage exactly at the moment when the spiritual crisis in the country reached its maximum. The mid-70s was timeless time, the country was lazily dying in its own swamp called developed socialism. The main signs of the style were falseness and officialdom, and the sprouts of the living, trying to break through this layer of carrion, were easily trampled down by the adherents of the big grey style. But just as in any sleek nerd boy there is a latent desire to commit some kind of mischief at least once, but from the heart with a scuffle, with obscenities, so in Soviet society there was an unspoken desire to smear the map of everyday life with bright vulgarity. We wanted a slight shake-up. In 10 years the desire for a slight shake-up will develop into a desire for a heavy shake-up, perestroika will break out, and then everywhere. In the Soviet Union there were countless favorite male and female singers Valentina Tolkunova and Lyudmila Zikina, Yuri Guliaev and Muslim Magomayev, Yosef Kabzon and Anna German. 
To say that they were all voiceless and talentless would be untrue, but they had one thing in common, they were extremely wholesome. And society had already had enough of the chastity, they wanted something sharper. The soul was waiting for something and waited. And then Ala Pugacheva jumps out with messy red hair and teeth far away from perfect but extremely agile and on top of all this artistic and vocal. Hearing her song Arlequino, Harlequin, the audience was stunned with happiness. It was such a perfect match with everyone's expectations that the feeling of celebration has not gone away to this day. Pugacheva fully satisfied the demand for vulgarity, which in turn for the vast majority of fans was, if not complete, then at least partial replacement for freedom. Of course, she couldn't resist just vulgarity. Pugacheva always, even those young times, felt unusually subtly and accurately the needs of the public. Her instinct told her that it was time to move on from Kabzon chastity and Talkunova softness because they smelled of mothballs. Being a part of the system, Pugacheva took the first step towards its destruction. She gradually, step by step, destroyed the sacredness of Soviet life, demolished the partitions separating officialdom from ordinary life. Pugacheva was a clown, a jester, which she announced to the world in her song Arlequina. I'm a jester, I'm a harlequin, I'm just laughter. And jesters are always allowed a little bit more than others. And that song Arlequina, I still remember the tune Arlequina, Arlequina, although I never liked the song. As I said, she performed that song back in 1975 in Bulgaria uh, during the music uh, competition uh, called Zalatoy Arfei, uh, Golden Orpheus, and she shocked the Bulgarian audience and she took the first place. Ala Pukachova was different not only in her professional life as a singer but also in her personal life. She was married five times which is kind of really unusual for the Soviet era. Of course we never had any those I call them yellow magazines you know like National Enquirer so there were just rumors going on but yeah she was married five times and every time she remarried she married a younger and a younger guy. And besides five husbands she also had countless lovers so there were stages in her life when she would start performing as a new musician and everyone knew okay they're probably dating so she went through quite a few of those her first full album zirkala dushi the mirror of the soul was published in 1978 it was of course bestseller in the soviet union and by 1983 it got sold in 7.7 .7 million copies total sales of that album is 10 million I think I mentioned earlier, I wasn't a big fan of most of her songs, there were some I liked a lot, but because people play them out of every apartment and on the radio and on TV, I pretty much knew the words for every songs of hers, Vsemogut Karali, Volshebnik Nidauchka, is others and i said links will be below in the comment section so you can check them out and obviously well at least in my opinion ala pugacheva is pure soviet phenomena there is no way she could be so popular in western europe or united states and i know i'm probably gonna sound shallow right now but you need to have the looks on the top of the great voice you know it's hard to be some you know just the other looking woman and to become a, a mega star and Ala Pugacheva, as I said, I hate Sun Shallow and was not that hot, not that pretty. And her voice is not that great either. She could sing well, she could manipulate her voice, but there's nothing special about her voice. In fact, once again, talking about Shallow, Comrade Sergei, I don't think there was a single female singer in the Soviet Union that I had a crush on. The only female singer I kind of liked was Anna Vieskia. The only singer that managed to penetrate my thick skin was German singer Sandra Lauer. She was extremely popular in the 1980s in the Soviet Union as well as the Western Europe. And she had the looks, she had the songs I really liked, and I had her posters all over my walls. So yeah, that's the only one I really had a crush on. Meanwhile, Ala Pugacheva had around 500 songs in her music library that the songs she performed. And she had quite a few hits that pretty much the whole country was singing and truly enjoying it. In 1983, Million Alich Rose, A Million of Red Roses. Apparently that song was super popular also in Japan. 
That was on every corner. Million, 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 In 1984, she had a song Iceberg, which also was extremely popular. А ты такой холодный, как айсберг в океане. The iceberg song even showed up in the Soviet cartoon No Pogadi, where the wolf is chasing a rabbit. That was pretty funny. Around 1985-86, uh, Alla Pugacheva got interested in the kind of like a soft rock or disco rock music. She was dating a, one of the rock musicians. She started wearing mini skirts. And in 1986, there was another hit called Две звезды. Uh, two stars. Две звезды. Oh, that's, I don't remember the rest. <laughs> oh my god. In September of 1986, Ala Pugacheva went to Chernobyl zone to perform for the liquidators and she actually got her health affected pretty badly after that performance. She just tells you how affected were people who worked there. And while I was looking for the photos of Ala Pugacheva and Chernobyl, I stumbled upon this interesting letter which was written by Mikhail Gorbachev in 2019 to Ala Pugacheva for her 70th birthday. Remember, she was born in 1949 and the letter says that I guy Allah dear Allah as the saying goes I happen to be a ruler in the era of Allah Pugacheva remember that joke I said in the beginning of the video here first to that joke that he happened to be a ruler in her era it was a complicated era we were learning to be free but you didn't have to study that you're an example of a free person and a brave one I will never forget when you went to Chernobyl. And my wife, Raisa Mikhailovna Maximovna, was using me to get tickets on your concerts. I am glad that I had time to sign one of the last orders or degrees about naming you as a People's Artist of the Soviet Union. As you see, states are changing, but you remain the People's Pugacheva. Happy birthday. Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev is talking about the medal that was introduced in 1936. It's called Narodny Artist SSSR, People's Artist of the Soviet Union of the USSR. And from 1936 till 1991, 1,006 people received their award, including this clown, Oleg Popov, who got his award in 1969. And Alla Pugacheva dominated the music scene of the Soviet Union for the final 16 years from 1975 till 1991, but the Soviet government didn't want to issue her this award, this title of People's Artist of the Soviet Union, which I think is really pathetic on their part. So Gorbachev was brave enough in the last days of existence of the Soviet Union, he signed a degree and she received her well-deserved medal of the People's Artist of the USSR, Narodny Artist SSSR. And during her active career between 1978 and 2008, so for 30 years, uh, she published a total of 17 albums and I said sold more than 250 million copies. I don't think Ala Pugacheva got any awards during the Soviet days, but Boris Yeltsin and later Vladimir Putin awarded her with some medals for great achievements in the cultural life of Russia. But in February of 2022, when Russia began the war against Ukraine, Pugacheva refused to support Russian government and she had to leave the country together with her husband. And now they live in Israel. Her husband, his last name is Galkin, is officially named as a foreign agent and Alla Pugacheva requested to be named a foreign agent as well but Putin knows better because he said Alla Pugacheva is a big deal she's kind of like the symbol of the era so naming her as a foreign agent would look very bad for Russian government. At the time of this recording in 2024 Alla Pugacheva is 75 years old but of course thanks to modern technologies she looks way younger my grandma at the age of 73 looked 100 years older. So yeah, Alla Pugacheva was a big deal in the Soviet Union. I would say it's to the level of Madonna and Michael Jackson combined. But once again, she didn't have a lot of competition. And when there is no fish, crawfish is the fish. Nabiz Rybia and Rak Ryba. Okay, my friends, it's all I have for you today. I'm very curious about your opinion on her performance. If you listen to some of her songs, uh, please write in comments what you think. If you agree with me or not, otherwise, please don't forget to like this video and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.